Welcome back collectors! Today would normally be my weekly haul video, however, in place of that we've got the 1986 Hot Wheels review for you, which is highly anticipated, hopefully, long overdue for sure, and should be quite interesting. So, without further ado, let's get right into this video. No less than 77 vehicles to show you today, all from 1986, and pretty well all in mint condition. We're going to go in for a quick little overview of the collection before we get into the details. Each car, I'm going to uh, tell you the name of it, as released by Hot Wheels for the year. Now keep in mind, sometimes the names of these cars change from year to year. But this is going to be the name of the car for 1986. We've got the complete main line, including a bunch of very rare variations. Um, I've got all of the real riders released for the year. And the Speed Demons. Uh, what else have we got? Some international cars here at the uh, back left corner. Some of these are Canadian release, some are France. I've got the Speed Trigger playset device along with its original car. A uh, couple of cars in their packaging to show you some of the artwork of the time. And also some very rare variations of those cars that I just could not open. They are too valuable. The one and only year released Body Swappers complete playset along with a couple cars loose. So we'll look at that one in great detail as well. Of course the Turbo Tracks playset. One of the best playsets ever. And I have the original cars for that set as well. Mint condition. Very hard to find cars. So we'll start off with uh, a listing of each name of the cars. Go row by row. And I'll make any special notes of the cars and values of the cars following that. I forgot to mention that I have the complete line of crack up cars and flip out cars. So we're going to start with those. Now these have a whole bunch of interesting strange names uh, different names in fact even for cars of the same casting such as these three now I have some generic names I give these castings and I think some other collectors do as well we'll start out uh, just by saying its actual name and then the generic name following in addition to giving you the names of each of these cars and values uh, as we go through the video and I review each car I'll demonstrate its crack up ability and the same for the flip outs. But let's get uh, the names through here. We've got the test vehicle. This was a test track set exclusive, so it only came with the track set. You could not buy that one loose. And uh, I just generically call that one the stock car because we will see other paints of it. Then we've got the uh, back biter. Now that one I just call a pickup. Got Slammer, Slammer, and Super Denter. Those castings I call the 200SX. And then we've got a Super Denter. Nope, Knocker Stalker. Sorry, I already said Super Denter. Knocker Stalker, which of course is a stock car. And the Side Grinder. That casting I just call Exotic. And then we've got the Smash Mobile. This casting I call the mid-engine. Crunch Chief, also called service car. Bash Up, another mid-engine. And Sock and Roll, of course that's another exotic. Now those two came together in a two-pack exclusive. Exploder, also known as the service car. Next to it, the Ringer, the 200SX. Those two came in a Crack Ups 2-pack and are exclusive to the 2-pack. Now we get into the flip outs. We've got the Road Flipper. This casting has been called the Camaro Wind by Hot Wheels. That's an official casting name. And this one is called the Flipper Snapper. Uh, of course it's another Camaro Wind. We've got the Vaulton Van. I call this one the Ford Aerostar casting. And the Capsider. So I think these ones actually have another casting. I've seen this van somewhere else. A casting name, I'm not sure exactly at this point, but it is a Ford Aerostar. Then we've got the Flip Buster. I just call this one the police car. 
and Flip Roarin police car. The Flippin' Frenzy in red and the Drag Flip in yellow. These ones also, I just call them the Nissan 200SX. 31 Doozy, 35 Classic Caddy, 37 Bugatti, 55 Chevy, 57 T-Bird, Auburn 852, Camaro Z28, Classic Cobra, Highway Heat, Jeep CJ7, Mercedes 540K, Popovet, Power Plower, Race Ace, Screamin', Stock Rocket, Tricar X8, Firebird Funny Car, 80's Corvette, Nissan 300ZX, Fiero 2M4, 40's Woody, Combat Medic, Shell Shocker, Ford Steak Bed Truck, Highway Hauler, Good Humor Truck, two examples there, Peterbilt Tank Truck, two examples once again, Rescue Ranger, Backburner, Jet Sweep X5, Cargoyle, times two, Double Demon, times two, Evil Weevil, Fangster, Turboa, Vampira. Over to the real riders, we've got the 57 T-Bird, Classic Cobra, Jeep CJ7, Jeep Scrambler, Path Beater, Power Plower, Rescue Ranger. From the body swappers, these vehicles weren't officially named by Hot Wheels, so we've got the off-road pickup truck. This casting is very similar to the Commando, uh, released in later years. We've got the police car, which shares no casting with any other cars, and the sports car. Again, those two cars were never seen again. From Canada, we've got the 80s Firebird. This was a Canadian release only. I've also got two other examples here. One with the metallic red, very rare. And there's a loose one of the car that you saw in the package. Also from Canada as an exclusive was this Pepsi truck. Same casting as the Good Humor truck. And I've got some notes I'll tell you about that as we get into the video. And finally, one car from France, the Malibu Taxi. As for the vehicles in the blister packs, we'll get to each of those. Most of them are variations of the vehicles that I have loose on the counter before you on the table. So as we get to each of those vehicles, uh, I'll bring forth the uh, appropriate variation and we'll talk about those at that time. We're going to start out by looking at these play sets and the body swappers, which I find to be some of the most interesting items from 1986. Now there were other play sets that I don't have uh, to do with the Speed Demons. There was a whole bunch of Speed Demon play sets that came out. In fact, several of these cars here are exclusive to those play sets, and I'll tell you which ones in when we get to that. Um, I don't have those, uh, but the reason why there were so many play sets was because the Speed Demons had never been seen before. This is a new series brought to you by Hot Wheels in 1986. Uh, the Crack-Ups, we've seen those in years prior, but this is a very large assortment of cars in, in 86, which is pretty cool. The Flip-Outs were only released in this year as well, so lots of interesting lines of vehicles that Hot Wheels tried out in 86. Obviously the body swappers, only one set of those ever released with the three vehicles. Uh, we kind of zoomed through all these vehicles as I was naming them, but a lot of these cars I call from the main line, but you've got everything from workhorses to uh, classics. You know, the, the main line was kind of broken up into different sub names. I don't have all those names on hand and it's not really that important because this is a loose collection. but. Uh, as we went through the line of vehicles here, there are some to note that weren't in main lines or even necessarily packaged. For instance, this Firebird Funny Car was a Kellogg's uh, mail-away promotional car. Not sure if that was a... I think it was a mail-away. It might have been found in the cereal boxes of the time. I'm not quite sure. We talked about those two cars. They are exclusives to the playsets. This Fiero was seen in the Turbo Tracks playset as well. 
TurboTrax 3000. I'm not sure if that belongs here. It might supposed to be in 85. Um, we've got the only high raker of the 1980s. High rakers were basically phased out after 1986. Uh, not from the 1980s, sorry. For 1986, it's the only high raker. We've got the Action Command. Those are the only two vehicles released this year in the Action Command series, which I have one over there in the cardboard. You can see quite a recognizable blister pack. Uh, as we went down, we got into some of these workhorses. That's the subsection of the main line. And uh, some of these, okay, yeah, those are all workhorses. Here we have the Ultra Hots from the Ultra Hot series, also a subsection of the main line. The Speed Demons, of course, a subsection of the main line. You can see there a rare variation of the Evil Weevil with black wall wheels. And in the back, the real riders, of course, were not that many for 1986. Real riders will continue into 1987, and after that, basically phased out. Not many in the 87, I don't believe. TurboTrax playset. There were three TurboTrax playsets created by Hot Wheels over the years of 1985 and 1986. The 1985 is the TurboTrax 3000, which, as I was digging, I've got some good news. There's the TurboTrax 3000. So I've done a review of this video, or an actual track set play of that video set up. You can look that up on YouTube. Now you can note that this set is slightly smaller and different vehicles, of course. That's the 1986 one. As I was digging, when you know, I found my TurboTrax Mach 1 from 1986. So indeed, that Fiero that I was questioning earlier, I mean, this Fiero was also seen in the main line years later. Uh, it's a popular little casting, but it did come with this playset. So there's really no other way to identify the Fiero from the playset to the Fieros that you can find in years later is the main line. So let's start with the small one first, the Mach 1. Flip it over and you've got the back. You can see the, uh, the track is just a simple little kind of double loop. And then there's an advertisement for the larger uh, Turbo Tracks set, just the Turbo Tracks, not the 3000. The Turbo Tracks play set. There's a really good image of it set up nice and close. Little kids playing with it. And we'll flip that over, see what's on the back there. Now, of course, all of these sets are interchangeable and customizable. You can put them all together and make a massive set, which I have never done. I haven't even actually set up most of these. I'm just looking here with you. Turbo Tracks, Super Turbo Tracks. And what kind of advertising do we have on the 3000 while we're here? There's no limit to how far you can go with Snap-on TurboTrack sets and accessories. Now these ones don't have boosters, they actually have hand crank, you wind them up and uh, theoretically they will spin a few times. I've had kind of mixed success with the one I opened up. That's another story though, we can't do a review on these track sets right now, it would just take way too long. Um, speed Trigger, that's a pretty easy one to show you. Nice little package um, and on the back it's got a few of the a few of the cars of the time and two young competitors with their speed triggers put it right down flat on the ground like that and zamo so well, I'll be another video demonstrate that at some point be a good little one minute video unlike this one which will probably end up being 45 minutes um, now, finally, body swapper. Body swappers. Now, I probably can flip the camera around to do a proper review of this one. But uh, since we're here, there you go. You can see the body swappers have an interchangeable base with uh, some instructions there. Now, this is an extremely hard set to find, especially in the package. The cars alone are nearly impossible to find because of their... There's no names on them. We'll look at the castings here in just a moment. 
but uh, a tough little set to find and uh, I think I paid about 60 or 70 dollars for this set on eBay I would price that higher if I were to sell that which I never would but if I was someone selling this I, I would say that it'd be worth at least a hundred dollars just because of how rare it is now looking closer at these body swappers here is a chassis might have to zoom in a little bit for the focus as you can see nothing on the chassis to identify it and the body of the truck is a shell so the interior is actually one with the chassis it could come off quite easily if you really wanted to it's just clipped onto the chassis no plastic rivets although I can't really see any point in switching the interiors from the chassis it should be noted that of course as these chassis are all interchangeable with the bodies so would the interior be for the most part now this engine on this chassis is not supposed to be silver I do believe someone has painted it it is black well, I, actually I don't not know that for a fact because there's one mint in the package sorry about that um, let's demonstrate this truck being put together now there is a clever little tool as well but you really don't need it just kind of hooks on like that and then with your thumbnail you can just twist that and there is the commando whoa oh my goodness now I call this one the commando because here's a commando this is a Kmart exclusive from the off-road race set in 1998 uh, clearly same trucks I got exactly the same body there's no interior on this one uh, that I can see and uh, as you can see in 1998 it did receive a new chassis with a rivet and uh, there's no tabs for the interior because I don't think it has an interior actually it does have an interior I can see it just vaguely through the bottom of the vehicle just a basic little plastic interior quite possibly a reuse of this piece who knows I have to take it apart to be sure so that's that truck now let's assemble this one with a different different base this base is uh, located under the police car in the set kind of a new look for the truck quick custom work 1986 there's those two trucks side by side and the sports car well I think you get the point there is an engine that is missing you can see the engine in the package under the sports car I imagine that is a very difficult piece to find if you're getting these cars loose as would the tool it's got like a little hex head tool for where I've been using my thumbnail so those are the body swappers let's move on to the crack ups crack ups so we've got the test vehicle as I said I was going to demonstrate the functionality of all these vehicles first a little quick one around of the car this one is in absolutely pristine condition as most of my crack ups are some of them are blister pulls so for that reason I won't actually be smashing this car into another car as you may see other demonstrators do but I'm going to use a less harmful fingernail uh, punch to the front of the vehicle if I do have some chipped ones here I might give them one little crack for you but there you go that's all broken up and it's got an actual little detailed engine underneath and then to reassemble I won't do a reassembly for all of them it's because it's a bit fiddly but there you go pretty pretty good that's the test vehicle now to the back biter this truck will also be seen in blue I'm not sure if that was the year prior or the year following I think that's the year prior uh, so in 1985 but only two two of these uh, vehicles ever made the blue one and the red one and the uh, back plastic portion hard to find on some vehicles for that reason and you can see it tends to go flying it is kind of loosely held on there with uh, just a little clip but uh, easy to be sprung loose when you're playing with these things because the only thing that really holds it all together is when it's assembled you can actually hold the vehicle by it but with it off it just kind of falls apart so 
that's a pretty expensive little crack up to uh, to get in mint loose condition for obvious reasons and all these crack ups are quite pricey if you find them on the blister in good condition being mint in the card now I've got a couple slammers here literally two slammers and the super denter so all these being the same nice tampa work on this car there you go you can see a really mushed up rear end on this car exhaust pipes all smash out every which way and there you go it's got at least one chip on it from someone that had to just try it out on camera most likely or off camera that was not me I did not do that chip to that car but one chips not so bad considering what these cars were designed to do and how they were played with this one is probably the most common of the three but still a very hard piece to find I actually had one just like this one growing up as a child mine did not survive this well I still have it but it doesn't have the black or the, the plastic louvered piece on the back that's the susceptible part on these cars and also that little tab that kind of holds the back from spinning around those often get broken off or worn down if the whole thing isn't missing completely so those are all quite interesting we've actually got one more here as well this is part of the two pack exclusive as I had mentioned earlier in the uh, overview video uh, that did come with this uh, crunch chief all right well maybe that'd be easier so there you go there's the dented door now these are some of the most durable crack up cars you'll usually find these ones intact uh, we've got this is an expensive piece here the knocker stalker very difficult car to find there were three knocker stalkers in total two for this year the two white ones and a red one from 1985 this white one is the most expensive one to buy uh, I bought this one mint loose and I believe that set me back about 30 or 35 dollars so zap nice piece these tampos for some reason are very susceptible and easy to wear off so uh, that's one thing to note about that one another car from uh, my youth uh, this is actually a mint version I got because my my youth one is a little bit banged up uh, what did we call this one the um, side grinder there you go quite a good dent in that one you can see boom that's what would have happened to create that sort of dent quite a nice little car never to be seen again as most of these cars weren't outside of the crack up lines um, as far as castings go and being repurposed there are several paint variations and tempo variations of this car over the years that the crack ups were produced and here is another one of those variations this is from the two pack exclusive this one was the um, bash up or no sorry S sock and roll that's the sock and roll here's the bash up uh, we haven't looked at one of these yet now this one also has a weak kind of plastic hood with uh, a plastic tab very similar to the louvered ones for of this type so another Another very easily damaged one if, you've, if you're buying these used and played with. It says Cruiser on it. Quite a few paint variations of this over the years of the crack ups. Here's yet another one. Now, here's an example of. Oh no, this is mint. I might have actually opened that one out of a bad blister. Really nice pieces. We're getting a little crowded here, aren't we? And that, whoa! There's a crack up. We've got the state police car. This is a fairly tough one to find as well. These big police cars seem to be kind of popular amongst different collectors for different reasons or a combination of reasons, obviously, as my case goes. That's all the crack ups. Let's get into the flip outs. Now for the flip outs. 
Basically, the flip-out cars have a lever on the bottom, which you push down to grab the springy thing. And then this peg, it, it doesn't really stick down that low, as you can see. So it, it might get caught on some sort of surfaces, but more than likely what happens is when you smash this car against another object or a car, quite hard, I might add, it will kick the spring, flipping that lever over rapidly, and that'll make the car kind of somersault or catapult from side to side. So in addition, in a head-on collision to the two cars not just going like this and doing who knows what, you know, at high speed, of course, I'm just a low speed demonstration, it will also kick it and make some pretty dramatic uh, impacts. So now you can manually disarm it, of course, like that, which I'm going to do because these two cars, although they're not completely mint, they are in pretty good condition and I don't want a big nasty chip on them. So that's uh, that's the overview of those two cars. Quite nice, quite heavy, Camaro Wind. Um, I will demonstrate in a moment, but first let's look at some more. The two Aerostar vans, which of course these castings would be used again in future years. But this was the first release of this casting essentially. Um, the top body portion and opaque chrome windows will be used in many variations to come over the years and decades, but as I'd said, the flip-out chassis will not. Both those vans are about equally common to find. They're not overly hard to get. These flip-outs of the police cars are the hardest flip-outs to find and command the highest dollar if you're searching for them, especially the black one. The black one seems to be the hardest one to find. Not really sure if it was produced in lower numbers or was one of the end of the run vehicles or if it's just the most popular, but I had a lot of trouble getting this state police flip out car. These types of flip outs have a different, oops, different type of flippering lever. So you just stick that back like that. Once again, I'm not gonna smash this car into another one because I think I paid about $25 for this car. But I did notice from just testing off camera, the only way to release this mechanism, unlike the other ones, is for it to actually have an impact. So, it seemed like the safest thing to do was to just drop it and uh, onto the wood, which is a little bit more forgiving than hitting another metal car. So, unfortunately, I can't demonstrate that, as these are the only ones I have of these types of cars. And uh, don't want to smash them up any more than they already are. You know, I think these ones have the same mechanism as what we just saw. Indeed, they do. I know I have another one of these lying around somewhere, so I should be able to give you a demonstration of that one in a full-on collision with this old Aerostar, which is also a flip-out. So anyways, these two cars, the red one is the harder one to find, in my opinion, and uh, worth about $15 to $20 in mint condition. So, yeah, nice cars, very heavy and excellent play value at the time. Nice to find these things in mint condition, which is pretty tough nowadays. Well, unfortunately I can't find the beat up version that I said I would find, so instead I'm gonna smash into this vault van, which I've now tripped the trigger, with these two kind of beat up crack ups. Not much happening. Hmm. There we go, finally, at last. Now for the next few cars from what I call the main line, we'll just kind of skim through them. These are some of the more common cars. And for those more common ones, I would put a value on them of anywhere between five and $15. For the more uncommon ones, I'll mention values that I would expect. For instance, this 55 Chevy with the gold hot one wheels on it. Seems to be a pricier car to find in mint condition. It's a very smooth rolling car and some suspension. All metal, no interior. That one's worth about $20 to $25 in my experience. Uh, the green auburn. That's a cool new color for this casting. Typically we've seen it in yellow and gold and now 
in its third, or no, and then red as well. So fourth color uh, first came out in red back in 1978 or 79. It was 1979 actually. I'm looking at the wall behind me. But uh, nice, sharp, solid green, one year only, uh, never green again after 1986. The Camaro Z28, a very common car, all metal, no interior, with those very fast gold Hot One wheels on it. You can just hear, it's whisper quiet. Now compared to like white wall, black wall, quite a difference in sound and speed on these uh, gold hot wind cars with the suspension that one's worth about 10 to 15 dollars in mint condition the classic cobra we've seen this car before with the blue and white stripes now red with yellow stripes this is the first year this was introduced a very popular color scheme that would be seen for years and years well into the blue card series of the 1990s with no change or a very small change one thing to note, this one has the 427 on the hood. Later models will not have 427 necessarily. And while we're looking at that car, I'll just bring over its real rider cousin, released this same year. And uh, that's uh, only found with gray wheels on that. Sometimes those real riders would be found with white wheels, but not in the case of the classic Cobra. Highway Heat also known as turbo heater pretty sure opening hood quite a nice hood actually with detailed engine underneath a little bit of overspray now oftentimes the hoods don't open that nicely on these cars but this one very well done more gold hot one wheels some suspension this is an extremely hard to find paint variation um, paint and tampo variation. There's no other one like it. Again, the only only color released for 1986 on this. It was never seen again in orange. And that one, I think, is worth about $30 to $40. I may have actually spent more than that for that car. Um, that was one that required a very long time looking. And I think this one came out of the Trent Steel Collection, which was liquidated on eBay a few years back. So, yeah, I probably paid a lot for that car. And then we've got the CJ7, fairly common vehicle. We've seen that one before with different paint variations uh, and interior. Previously, it was metallic brown from 1983. And then we've got, oh, I think there's a yellow version as well of that somewhere. Anyways, I'm not going to try and rattle off every variation over the years. We're talking about 1986. Stay on the subject, oh dog. Okay, so we've got the Mercedes 540K, removable roof, Papa Vet. This one, of course, is a funny car. Whoa, very heavy piece. A harder car to find, actually, in mint condition. There's more common versions with uh, different tampos and a white paint job in years later. But this Papa Vet is a first release for 1986. And quite a valuable little car. I think that's worth about $25 to $30. Let's zoom over to the uh, Power Plower. Same vehicle as the Super Scraper. So this one came, comes in two variations and a real rider variation. Um, two real rider variations. This is the no toolbox version. I'll have to show you on the other ones. But the black wall version is actually quite a difficult little piece to find. That one's worth about $25. I think that one also came from the Trent Steel Collection. And here is its real rider. Also uh, no toolbox. The toolbox version I think is the hardest one to find. I actually don't have a toolbox version in the black wall. But there you see toolbox in the back corner. It's got two toolboxes and none in that one. Unfortunately, it's hard to find these variations on eBay because most sellers don't seem to know about the toolbox, no toolbox variations. And quite often when they take pictures of these things, it's just like that and there's no top picture. So a hard hard one to find. Um, I am looking for a toolbox version of that one. 
And let's move right along to the uh, Race Ace, formerly known as the Front Runnin' Fairmont from 1983 in metallic red and 1982 in enamel red. This one comes with a snazzy white paint job and some new interesting tampa work. Gold Hot One wheels, simply known as Fairmont, or Front Run in Fairmont. That is probably one of my favorite Hot Wheel castings of all time. Oh, we've got a smash up. And worth about $20 to $30 on that one. I actually like it so much I bought one on the card. This is an international card. Um, not sure from exactly where, but. There it is, Race Ace. So that is the toughest front run in Fairmont casting to find over the years. Uh, where were we? I've mixed up my cars because I smashed them together. There we are. All over the place here. On to the Screamin'. Really awesome, funny car and an expensive one. Hard to find in such nice condition. Yeah, that one's worth about $25 to $30 as well. And I think there's some sort of base thing going on here, yeah. The bases on both of these cars, the Corvette Funny Car, the Screamin', and possibly even, yeah, even the uh, Firebird Funny Car, they actually all share the exact same base. Yes, they do. This was not formerly known as the Army Funny Car, on its first release back in 1979 I think 78 so for obvious reasons there's no name on the bases of these cars because they're all different cars that have the same base there we are so now we're over to the uh, stock rocket this one goes by several names over the years I believe that is a Buick stock car old hot ones with suspension not very often you see Hot Wheels with suspension. But just the rolling, so nice. Okay, beautiful car. Another one of my favorite castings. Very similar to the uh, Crack Up car, um, which I call the stock car, but not the same. And that one's worth about $20 to $30 as well. The Tricar X8, nothing too fancy about this little beast. Three wheeled unit, all metal. Um, that was the Kellogg's promotional car, which may have been a mail away or possibly an inbox discovery. More likely it was a mail away. It's a pretty heavy car to have rattling around in your cereal. And that one I think is worth around $15 to $20. It was uh, fairly common, surprisingly. We've seen that car before in metallic uh, burgundy as well as burgundy enamel right back into 1982 I think in 1983 now we've got the uh, Turbo Trax 3000 exclusives well this one is exclusive to that one set this is a very hard car to find this one did come from the Trent Steel collection as well and I think that one was about $35 or so I have seen it for sale other times but very rarely does it come up without a chip on it as this one is. Very nice car, suspension, lots of detail. And then we've got this car which is exclusive to two play sets. One being the Turbo Tracks, the other being the uh, Trigger set which I put away already. And uh, so this one is actually quite a rare car as well in mint condition. Worth at least $20 to $25 nice opening and closing doors one of only two or three Hot Wheel castings ever produced to have opening uh, driver and passenger doors on it quite a nice little piece we've got the Fiero we talked about that one already 2M4 not overly expensive the 40s Woody this one is the only high raker that was actually produced in 1986 and the last high raker uh, ever. The casting of course was seen, wet, this casting with the same paint job seen well into the 1990s for the blue card and here is a 1987 version of that the first release with 
out. Oh, there's something stuck to it. It's like an elastic band around the wheels. I never even noticed that. Well, that's got to come off. But you can see the base change. Quite a, quite a difference. New base for 1986. Or 87 going forwards. I just pulled that one out just to show you since they are so similar. It's a, a good way to deduce how old your 40s Woody is from the other ones that look very similar. And then from the Action Command, we've got the Combat Medic. A solid, heavy uh, delivery van. Ah, shoot, with its mobile moving gun. Little wheels under it, and uh, it's a plastic base. And we've got one of those, as I said, on the packaging. Here's a closer look at that. The Action Command. These are quite expensive when found in conditions such as this on their original cardboard. Back in the day, this was $1.77 at Winds. Ooh, that blister feels really brittle. And of course, the Action Command Stow and Go Base. You could actually get this playset for it. There's the other vehicles that were released. Uh, Action Command has been around since 1985. And... Uh, Continued until 1987 when the series was phased out. So there's more vehicles to come in the next installment of uh, Hot Wheel year by year videos, such as this. But those are the two from 1986. Uh, over to the Hot Ones, or Ultra Hots, I should say. This was a series named after the wheels, which were designated Ultra Hot Wheels, UH. This is a hard little car to find in this kind of condition. Uh, quite often the little tailpipes are broken off on it. And uh, that's worth about, ooh, I think $15, $25. I think that's about what I spent for that. Maybe more, not sure. But hard car to find. And then the uh, Jet Sweep X5. The second and last time we would ever see this car. We, the first version I think we saw in 1985, it was kind of a metallic gold. Here we have it in Zamac with the Tampo. It's got a big turbine engine in it. Very skinny little car. Does not do well on tracks that require boosters to run the car. And uh, not worth that much, but a harder car to find because it was not very popular. And that would be the last year you ever saw that car. We'll go on into the trucks now. These are from the Workhorse series. And we've got one on the package to look at after this. But the uh, Rescue... Oh, I'm zoomed in on the Rescue Ranger Real Rider. The Rescue Ranger also came with black wall wheels and, of course, white hub rims. The rubber tires. Rescue Ranger. That's a good old casting. This is the first time we'll see it with the green forest paint. Forest service paint. Railroad truck. One of these variations has a Zamac tank. The other one has the painted silver tank. I believe it is the painted silver tank version that is the hard one to find. And another thing to note, these big old heavy trucks have the recessed exhaust top. Later models will have uh, the unrecessed version of the exhaust. Likely not with this paint configuration, but this is a heavy beast. It's got the... Um, Put the camera down and show you. It's got those little thingamajiggies that come out, little hoses. Spray your fuel all over the place, or maybe even just fill up some guy's Auburn 852 with crude. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Anyways, there's that one. And this one on the package, which is the rare silver version. Got the big long list of 86 cars. And uh, one thing to note, this, this is such a heavy truck. I can imagine back in the day, they would have gone through a few of these on the pegs. The cardboard probably would tear through, or the blister, I'm sure, would fall off the cardboard. It's pretty hard to find this truck on a good piece of cardboard because of its sheer weight. So, as we go along. Got quite an interesting variation here with a value to assign to it. I didn't actually say anything about value on those. The truck with the silver tank on the back um, was about $20, I think. 
Well, I'm glad I checked that on my computer just now. I've messed uh, everything I just said about this truck completely up. The Strawberry is the new Tampo for 1986. This is the old Tampo, so this is the hard one to find because it has that blacked out popsicle, not Strawberry. In 1984, this truck came out with popsicle on it. You can see these trucks are exactly the same. That little black line, that little black tampo line, I'm just zooming in so that you can tell if you have an authentic one. You can compare it against this one, which I've deemed to be authentic. That black line makes this truck worth about $25 versus about $2 for the strawberry version. This truck would be seen for years to come uh, over and over again. However, the window will get smaller in future years. These are considered the large window variant. And uh, from this truck, we're going to skip right on over to that Canadian release international good humor truck where I can demonstrate that window size thing I'm talking about. Here it is on the, the card back. Ice cream truck it's called. I called it the Pepsi truck originally. Big window. Very hard casting to find. And uh, there's the date on it, 1986. Interestingly, this truck was released identically again in um, 1990. Canada only. This is the one I have on my 1990 slot, but really it should go into 1986 because it is the exact same truck. That one's worth probably about $25. This one is not mint, of course. It's a little probably could clean it and make it look a little better. Then in 1992, I kind of digressed here, but might as well talk about these while we're here. They're, they are going to come up again months from now when I get to the 1992 video. Um, here it is again with that small window variation. As you can see the difference in size. This one is in mint condition and I think set me back a fair penny. These values here are from the old South Texas Diecast Collectors website, which the values were known to be very inaccurate. But anyways, that's that. Let's move on into the rest of the trucks here. We've got the Highway Hauler with Masters of the Universe toy delivery. Tough little piece. Probably about $20, $25 on that one. And the Ford Stake Bed Truck. Seen this truck with uh, multiple configurations over the years. This one's worth probably about $5, really nothing too crazy on that. Played with versions are often missing this flimsy plastic uh, box portion. Okay, I've got to make some room here because now we're going to talk about some uh, ugly cars. So we've got the two variations of the Cargoil. Pretty sure the yellow one came from one of the play sets of the time. Speed Demons, of course, being uh, a new item in 1986. The series would be carried on for years, well until the uh, mid-90s, with some returning castings from this original set. Um, that one, that one, has, I don't think we ever saw this one again with, uh, with a different tampo variation, but I could be wrong. I'd have to double check on that. The uh, Double Dragon, this one is the uh, mainline version. This one was from the Leapin' Demons playset, so that was exclusive to the playset. Probably the most valuable from the bunch here, uh, simply because of that, but really not worth more than a few dollars. Most of these cars can be had for around a buck or two. Um, they don't chip. The worst that can happen is that they get bent axles and maybe some slightly bent plastic uh, fenders or something, but and of course a little bit of tampo loss or scratching but really these cars are pretty much indestructible um, this little evil weevil I had mentioned the rare variation well, it turns out I just double checked my computer this black wall version actually belongs in my 1988 video forthcoming this, uh, this variation was not released in 1986 although the packaging indicates 1986 so hmm. I don't know. I'm going to go with my gut on uh, that being from 88, though, because uh, I must have done some research at the time for me to indicate that on my computer in my 
organized little catalog of my cars. Uh, yeah, so that's the rest of them. This one you'll see again year after year. Purple car, very easy to find. Probably the most common of all of these cars is this Vampira. Now, interesting, none of these cars have the name on the base, except for Evil Weevil. I think Evil Weevil has it. Nope. Fangster? No. Turboa does. Turboa does. Nope. Okay, anyways, that car will be purple until about 1994 when it uh, will be receive a black plastic body, which seems more fitting for a, a bat type car. Vampire bat, I guess. Uh, weird looking things, eh? Anyways, I'm not a big fan of these cars, but I guess some people like them. Their price would indicate they are not the most collectible vehicles, but they do make up a portion of the 86 collection. And uh, like I said, I have to have every single one. So let's get on into something more my style that I like. Real Riders. So we've already looked at a couple of these. Um... Nothing much more to say about those first two. Path Beater. It's a cool little casting. Probably another one of my favorites. Very nicely proportioned. Chevy S10. And also this one's got the best tampo and paint job this truck will ever receive in my opinion. Looks dynamite with those white hub real rider tires on it. Battery's about to go nuclear here. Nuclear. Bush got me all mixed up on that word now. Well, anyways... Jeep Scrambler, that's a nice little piece, new color for the year. Uh, with the, sorry, with the real riders it is. We'll see this again with black walls in 1987. The first release is actually a real rider. And I think the same goes true for this vehicle. I originally stated that this came out a year prior, but I'm pretty sure this is an 87 version uh, with black walls anyways. This 86 is the real rider version. Classic Cobra, T-Bird, they're all worth about $15 to $25. I'm hoping I have enough battery to finish the video. I've got four cars left to show you. It's blinking crazy. Kanda release only, 80s Firebird. Gray interior, all yellow. The Canadian release cards don't have anything on them, unlike the mainline American ones, which have Speed Demon, Workhorses, all the rest. I bought two of these cars so I could have one loose, mint example. This is a really hard one to find, and uh, also an international release car only. These ones have plastic bases, which is pretty uncommon. Most of the cars we've seen here have metal bases, very few with plastic. Um, nice paint job on that. And the final car that I have, just a kind of an oddball that came from Europe somehow, is this Taxi, Malibu Taxi, made in France. Just says Taxi. It's actually in pretty good shape. That's the 86 video. Hope you enjoyed it. Stick around for another video. Um, I put out new videos every Thursday morning. That's part of the new thing. So look for a video every Thursday morning. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Leave a comment or a question. Love getting those and answering as many as I can. And uh, happy hunting.